Hey there, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step guide you can use to mix in FL Studio using only stock plugins. So if you're new, hit the subscribe button down below and let's get started. Let's make sure all our tracks are linked to the mixer. I'm going to open up my channel rack. I'm going to have my track linked to the mixer. If you have tracks linked to your mixer, it's okay. You just um, skip this part of the video. So I already have this track already linked. So I'm not going to like highlight it again. So I'm going to come right here, come to an empty insert. Command Shift and L to link all, or Control Shift and L fuse windows to link all of them. So you see, I have them linked. And you can see, I have this um, drum sound already linked. So, so I just press Option or Alternate, then press my left or right arrow key to move them so it becomes part of my main drum because I want them to be like grouped in the same section. So I also have a snare right here. So then I have the shaker loop. I'll link it right here. I have another, uh, I think, shaker loop as well. Link it right here. So I'm going to start with the drums first. Okay, so right here, let's solo the drum pattern. I recommend you come to the part that has the most elements or the most sounds of the drum sounds or the most part of the drum sounds. So I'm going to come here. So the first thing I'll do is load of fruity parametric EQ to take care of some frequencies that may not be very helpful on our kick and this is typically the sub bass like 20 hertz to 25 30 hertz okay so i'm going to come right here come to type bypass and then order steep eight now you use this steep that is this it calls this steep you want to turn on linear phase mode on the eq right here now for some other types of kick you mean to go higher up to like 35 40 hertz but for this type of kick you can hear how soft it is, but at the same time, it's very bass heavy. So I'm going to just take to about 30 hertz. Perfect. And the next thing I'm going to do is come to my main recurring sound. Okay. So if you have a rim shot, you want to go to that. If you have a snare, you want to go to that live, but the most obvious recurring sound. And in my case, is this sound right here. I'm going to reduce the volume. I take it up gradually so I can get a good level. As soon as it sounds reasonable to you, you want to leave that. I'm going to load up an EQ. Again, clean up some parts. You don't have to be too surgical here. Just clean up a little bit of the low ends. You can see one thing I like with FLC is that it shows you like the view of the sounds. So you can see this waveform right here. The part that has the biggest or the most recurring waveform is the part that actually has like the key area of the sound. But at the same time, you don't want to cut. You see that you don't want to cut too much. You want to back up a little bit. Come around here. It may not sound like it's making a huge difference yet, but it's going to all add up. Okay. Then I'll come to the next recurring sound. This guy, raise the volume on the way down. At the same time, we're going to eat jeans. Remember, don't allow your eyes to determine where you're going to place the fader. Just use your ears to listen and decide where at what level it sounds good. I'm going to use an EQ again. Able to come right here.
Now I already have an EQ here, but this was just for sound design purpose. So you can add up a second EQ and tweak. But I think this sounds just fine. So I'm not going to do any, you know, tweak. They just adjust the volume. EQ, come right here. You can see shakeout, for example, it has some low frequency energy right here, and there's really no need for a shakeout to have low frequency energy, unless if it's a percussion loop. But since it's not a percussion loop, I'm going to use a high pass and sweep across so it's more precise in taking out that energy. Then I'm going to come to the next shaker. Now we're going to pan the drum so it sounds a bit wider in the mix. Now I think about my piano is that it sounds a bit gritty and rough. So don't be too bothered about having like the most spread out panning, unless again, if it's a creative decision. So we don't want to make it sound over mixed. Okay. So have a little bit of that hood feel. Okay. That is that local feel. Okay. So we don't want to over polish it. So before going any further, I want to let you know that you can sign up for our online mixing and mastering program where you learn how to mix beats and even vocals professionally. So even if you just want to learn how to mix beats or learn how to mix vocals, the course work is step by step. So you understand the core foundations and also principles that you need to know to get high quality professional mixes consistently, keyword consistently. And it does come with a project file. And you also get to any certificate by the time you have concluded the course. So if you're interested, click the link in the description to sign up for the program. It's 100% online and you can learn at your own pace. Let's get back to this lesson. But the common panning guide I'll give you is really for drums is similar sounds, opposite direction. Okay. For example, if you have two rim shots, one go left, one go right. If you have a sound that is placed with very close or similar rhythm to your rim shots, also in opposite direction. So basically any sound, whether rim shot or percussions that have similar rhythms, opposite direction or that place similar vibes or have similar sounds opposite direction okay so that it sounds balanced on the stereo image the kick always stays in the middle how do you so again we'll come to the rim shots how do you know what sound you know has similar sounds to the rim shot again i am assuming you produce this track but if you didn't produce it you just want to solo the rim shot and then listen to the sounds that comes close but let's listen to another one So these two are re sounds like rim shots on opposite direction. But again, you don't want to do this without the kick. So when, you, when you're coming to like pan like the main element, that is the main rim shot or the main rhythms that make up the drums, you don't want to go too far. Maybe like um, five to ten, fifteen percent should be fine. So. Bring this back here. Then we're going to turn on the next sound. Now this sound and this other sound are kind of similar, so I'm going to pan them in opposite direction. Now the thing we pan is that sometimes it makes sound louder and more quiet, so you have to also take note of that and we'll reduce this. Then I'm going to come to the next sound. Now, sounds like this that have a lot of mid frequency or low frequency energy. You have to be careful about how wide you pound them. Typically, I recommend anywhere close to the middle, maybe like um, five, again, between five to 15, 20%. Okay, so we need to find it slightly here. These two have similar things, so I'm finding them in opposite direction. I mean, they have similar sound, not similar rhythm. These two have similar rhythm, uh, similar sounds, so I'm finding them in opposite direction. Then I'm going to come right here, my snare. I'll leave the snare in the middle because one, it doesn't have any sound that kind of feels like it. Just let it ride.
if I have like a second snare, I will point them in the opposite direction. If I had three snares, one in the middle, one left, one right. Our shakers, obviously opposite direction. Now, the next we're going to do is create a boss for our drums so we can have more control over our drums and apply some simple and interesting effects. Control shift and then left click each one or command shift and left click each one. Okay. Then you simply right click the empty inserts, come to track routing, route selected to this track only or create submix if that one is fine. So let's do this. And then you can see all the cables are routed into this guy. You hear that? So rename this, now name this drum boss. I'm going to do some simple things to our drum boss to make it sound even more exciting. First, we're going to add a compressor so that you lose the drum a little bit. I'm going to just take this halfway and I'll compress typically between two to three ratio one since it's our drum element. You have to be careful how hard you compress it. Unless again, it's the vibe you are going for. You can compress even harder. So let's take it to about three ratio one. You can hear how much it squashes the drums, right? When the threshold is too high, so I'm going to relax the threshold. Without it, it did. It just sounds more put together, right? More glued together. Okay. Then next, I'm going to add is a distortion plugin, which is fruity, fast distort. Because sometimes my piano drums do sound gritty and rough, so this adds to that. Here, yeah, that's already sounding really gritty. It's too much. What we do is reduce the mix and reduce the threshold. Yeah, then on. Click on. So if I turn off the effect so far on the drums, like the drum boss. When it's on. If you have chords, I recommend you start with the chords, but since I don't have chords, I have this guy, which is my main sound. I'm going to start with it. So I'm going to bring down the volume as usual. Then bring the volume up to a level that you like. Typically, you want to EQ this. You can load up Fruity EQ, or you can just do the EQ from here, whichever one you want. So let's do come right here, shave off some. Melody. Then EQ as well. There is the volume, I bring it up. The pan is not post direction because they are similar sounds. I'm going to pan this here. And it's here typically again between um 20 to 50 percent for your melodies especially if they're like ambient melodies if it was main chords maybe it could be like 10 5 10 15 percent then i'm going to come right here so leave this in the middle at least for now reduce the volume Then EQ it as well. Then I'm going to come to a lead. EQ it as well. I'll pan it to the right. This is a lead sound, like a main sound, maybe somewhere between 10-15%. Then counter. I 
Adia says a counter melody, but it has a bass string, so you need to stay in the middle. You have to be careful when you can bass sounds. I'm going to come right here, type high pass, the eight. Again, we still have it around 20 to 30 hertz. So Then I'm going to come to the next sound, which is this guy. And it got way out here. You eat as well. Now we're going to come over to the log drums. Now, how you mix your log drum is real simple. First of all, we're going to EQ it a little bit. Then we're going to add a distortion plugin that is fast distort. Now we're going to come to the sound effects. These are much simpler. So thank you for right here. You don't usually have to add EQ or any serious effect to your sound effects and risers. It's just basic. They don't stay that long for them to be, you know, a real distraction. So just adjust the volume. You can add EQ if you want, but most times just volume works fine. I'm going to bring in the unmixed beats and they will listen and compare which one sounds better. Mm -hmm. 